record again. Okay. So, yeah. So today I just wanted to talk to you about how to make um, how to make multiples from your waxes. Um, but I wanted to clarify at the start that like there isn't there isn't time obviously in this brief, and it's not part of this brief at all to make multiples. Um, I just wanted to share my knowledge with you so that so that you all had like a base understanding of if you wanted to make wax multiples how you would how you would go about it in case you had like a future project where you needed it so just wanted to get that out there at the start so that I'm not stressing anybody out with what I'm with what I'm talking about um so basically to make to make multiples to make wax multiples, first of all, you need a mold that is suitable for wax injection. And there are two ways that we can make these molds. Um, one is hot with, um, in what we call a vulcanized rubber mold. And the other way is cold in what's just a silicon mold. So to show you some examples first, these are vulcanized rubber molds. So here's some big ones from the department. And here's some of my vulcanized rubber, mold, rubber molds. So it just look like this. And then when you open them, this is what they look like. So um, this is a ring mold. Um, so you got the ring um, and the sprue and sort of funnel or like cavity or like, impression inside and and then in in the four corners i've got some mold locks so that the molds will push together and like lock in together in the exact impression so that my so that my mold is correct so that's what they sort of look like on the on the inside um, that one's a bit, that one's uh, an old one from the department is sort of, they've left it stuck at the bottom and have just cut open the top bit for you to take out the wax injection. So that's a, these are all vulcanized rubber molds. And then here is one of my cold silicon molds. So <clears throat> this looks like this. Oh, hold on. Yeah, so a cold silicon mold looks like this. Um, again, it has the sort of like the four lock and impression sections in it, but this time I've had to like, I've had to cut them out. Um, but that's what our um, cold mold cold mold looks like. So first of all, I wanted to chat about what the sort of pros and cons are of, of, e of the silicon and the vulcanized rubber molds um, to see sort of which one you would use, which one you would use depending on what you're trying to make a mold of. So first of all, with the vulcanized rubber mold, that is that's the most sort of standard way of mold making in jewelry. Um, it's what you're, yeah, most likely come across. It's really good for metal masters. So if your piece of jewelry or your ring, whatever, whatever it is, is already in metal, then it's a really good way to, to make a mold. They're also, they're also really durable molds, so they will, they'll last a long time and you'll get a lot of multiples out of them. Um, separating the two halves um, is a bit easier than it is with the silicon ones. Um, all, what we do is we dust a little bit of talc, just a bit of talcum powder when we're making it. Um, I'll briefly show you. Um, and that helps to separate the two halves um, easier. So that's a pro. Um, the main, uh, one of the main cons with it is, um, that shrinkage will occur with, uh, 
vulcanized rubber mold. Um, so whatever it is that you're making a mold of, once you, once you have the waxes, they will be smaller than your original. So that's something that's more important to bear in mind when you're um, making mold balls with rings, or not more important, but just, just something to bear in mind. Um, your ring will be a, couple, a good couple of sizes smaller um, from the vulcanized mold. Um, so yeah, so then, then the, then the silicon, cold silicon mold. Um, so pros and cons of these ones. Um, the pros are, they are really good for materials that, that won't take any heat or pressure. Um, so they're really good if you've got, if you're making a mold of a wax like that you've, that you've just made before it's been made into metal, then you would make a cold mold from it. Because if the wax was in the vulcanized mold, it would just, it would just melt in the, in the press. Um, they could be also good for um, like organic, or organic models, if, um, if you're getting impressions of that. Um, and they can also be good for very delicate, fine, work so if there's like really tiny little bits of wire and um, small pieces of jewelry that has the possibility of melting or whatever in the in the vulcanizer then it is a cold mold that you're after um, other good pro with the cold mold is there is less shrinkage there's minimal shrinkage with a cold mold as opposed to a vulcanized mold um, and yeah it's good for like complex complicated models more complex models um, the, the cons the cons of them are that it will degrade a bit quicker than a uh, vulcanized mold um, and the separating of the two halves of the mold is more complex um, so with the with the vulcanized no, with the cold mold, um, it's sort of it's um, sort of a, it's a part A part B mix, and it's sort of be one solid chunk. And then, like I was saying, we would we would cut it and separate them, and the cutting of it can be more complicated because it's because you want to put these locks on. Um, it is it is worth knowing that this this is a job in itself. You can be just a, um, you can just be a mold maker technician, and that's all you do: make cold molds and cut them open. Um, but yeah, anyway. So those those are the pros and cons of of the molds. And I, now, what I wanted to do was show you. So yeah, I've not shown you the wax. So, so I want to show you the wax injector, what it looks like. So this mold um, makes rings and these are what the wax injections look like out of it so sort of with this the sprue obviously already attached these are three wax injections from the same mold so these are exactly the same completely identical um, so to show you the wax injector i'm just going to bring you behind me um, let me flip you around. This is the wax injector. This is what it looks like. Um, and so to to demo it to demo it cold because it takes um, it takes a good couple of hours to heat up the wax that's inside it. So it's full of it's full of wax. I would switch it on. Um, get the wax to heat up. And then when the wax is hot, then I would turn on the air compressor to get a pressure behind it because it needs pressure to push in. So using the wax injector itself is quite a simple tool. So I would pop my mold in like two plates and squeeze it tight so that I didn't get anything come out the sides. This is the, 
this is the little nozzle and I would just push it in, push it, and then my wax would come out. Um, then I would just stand it, stand it upright until my wax has um, hardened and set a bit more. Um, and then, uh, then I would be able to take, uh, take my wax out. So this is a, this is one where I've left the mold in it. So once the wax had hardened, I would remove, remove it. So yeah, that's what, that's what this tool is, the wax injector. Bring me back around here. Did anybody have any questions about, about that? No? Are we all okay? Yep. Yep. It's snowing, by the way. Is it snowing? Uh, snowing. That's exciting. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just up the road, so it must be snowing at Grays as well. <laughs> must be. <laughs> um, cool. Well, I will carry on. I was going to, what I wanted to, let me see. Yeah. Um, I, what I wanted to just briefly talk about is how, how you would make a vulcanized mold and how you would make a silicon mold. Again, I'm just, I'm just really briefly like going over this so that we have like a, a base understanding. It's really something that you'll understand much better if you actually do it and um, what to, where to make it. Um, but so with the, with the, with the vulcanized rubber molds, you will have mold um, mold frames that look a bit like like look a bit like these, um, and we have we have sheet mold rubber which come in sheets like this. So to make to make our to make our vulcanized mold, um, first of all we would we would need we would need six sheets of these. Um, we have three on the bottom and then then the then our model and then three on the top. So they've got their they're wrapped in plastic. So you would first of all unpeel both sides. One side is um smooth um and one side is a little bit um like diamondy, like um, got a texture to it. Um, when it comes to the, it, it doesn't particularly matter which way you put it, but when it comes to the pieces that are sandwiching the model, it's better to use the smooth side so that the texture doesn't sort of affect the model in any way. But so I'm not going to, I'm not going to unpeel these um, just now, but that is what you would do. You would unpeel them and you would, you would lay them in. So we do one, two, three, stuck together. Um, then you have this handy tool is a sprue, um, sprue former, sprue, uh, yeah, sprue former. So it's got a nice funnel to it, um, which we would use to where, that's where the wax injection nozzle goes in and then the sprue's already already there. So I would pop that in place. I'd pop the, I point out some of the molds have like, um, like a hole so that when you're putting that in place, it sort of, it stays completely central. Um, so yeah, you'd pop that in, you'd pop your model in place um, and then what we've got is these mold, mold lock, mold lock formers, um, which we can just pop four of these in the corners, which helps when we're cooking the rubber, it will then automatically have its like domes and recesses so that it locks into place. So we'd pop, pop four of them in, in place. Um, and then, and then I would put the next unpeeled, obviously, um, the next three layers on the top 
um, so that we've got our vulcanized mold sandwich all in place. Um, once I've got all of them together, then I would take it to my vulcanizer, which looks like this. Let me turn you around. So this is the vulcanizer. Um, what it basically is, is, is two hot plates um, in, a, in a massive press. Um, so what I, would, what I would do is I would, if I, if I pop you there, um, imagining that my vulcanized mold is in the frame, I would have a plate on both sides um, of it, and then I would sandwich it in and then turn, turn the um, clamp at the top to clamp it down as tight as I possibly can get it. I really want it, um, I really want the pressure there as well as the heat to cook the mold. Um, switch it on and uh, would leave it to cook for about an hour or so. Uh, our vulcanizer in the department is quite an old one, so uh, our one might take a bit longer, but in general, it's about an hour that it takes to cook um, to cook the molds. So yeah, got any questions about the vulcanized mold? No. Yep. Um, you put, you put the, the pattern, the original metal bit in between the into the, the vulcanized mold yeah as on yeah how how close do you need that to the sprue former do you want it to be touching definitely touching yeah um because if yeah if it's not touching then what you'll have to do is get in there with a scalpel and make sure that you've got that that funnel through so that the wax is able to reach reach the model um, and cutting the vulcanized rubber is a little bit well is quite a bit harder than cutting silicon so yeah you really do it's worth pointing out when you are setting it out in that sandwich section when you've got your your funnel and your sprue and your model take the time to make sure that it's in place and all touching um, I don't, I can't remember if I point, if I said about the talcum powder at that stage, um, but once, once you've laid it all, once you've laid it all out in your first half, so you've got one, two, three, your uh, model and your locks in place, then you'll dust it with talcum powder because the talcum powder acts as a release agent. Um, that's really quite important so that we we're able to separate the halves. Um, so that's what I was talking about as a pro is that because we've got a release agent, um, it just should come apart with relative ease. Um, but yeah. The, the other question, um, can you put more than one um, mold in the vulcanizer or is it just one layer? You can't build them up. So the, I mean, it will fit in the vulcanizer, will, it will fit to um, it should fit to at a time, but yeah. So it's, it's quite a slow process then, really only sort of 14 a day or something like that, if you if you need to uh, Yeah, I mean, and our one is quite old um, and and doesn't like, I feel like for, like for the, for industry and professional ones, you can guarantee that the bottom plate and the top plate are the same temperature and it's cooking it evenly. Um, but because our one's a bit older, I believe that I can't, I'm not sure which one it is, but one plate gets hotter than the other, which gives it like an uneven cook. But, um, but yeah, it's like mold making in general is a little bit expensive. Um, like with all the, with all the rubber and with like silicon and that. So it is, it's, um, it is something that you would reserve for something that you know you need. Um, as that's what I would do anyway. Thank you. So yeah. Is, has anybody else got any questions about um, the vulcanizer? No. 
No? Okay. So I'll, I just want to briefly talk about the cold, cold, yeah. So uh, cold silicon mold, um, again, it's all about, it's all about the mold, the mold frame really. And in industry, you can, you can, you get um, cold mold frames like already like the, this perspex frame and it has like, like for these, how we've got the, the funnel, which we can use these, these frames sort of have a funnel sort of within it. And it's, it's sort of the, the correct size already. Um, and all you need to do is pour silicon in. Um, but like here we can sort of, we can make them. Um, you should have all what, uh, you should all have seen um, Helen's ceramic plaster mold videos in that. And there is some crossover here with plaster molds and silicon molds. Um, and it's the fact that we're making a frame and we're, we're filling it up. Um, so I've got um, uh, a wax model on already attached to a sprue and on a blob of modeling wax as acting as my funnel. I would secure that on my base and then I would make make my mold walls and make it all really watertight. There we go. Yeah, so I would like probably put modeling wax um, around the edges and along the bottom so that it was really, really tight. Um, and then making the silicon um, is, is, is quite um, simple. It, it's a part A, part B, part A, part B mix. Um, each different type of silicon has different ratios and it's the ratio that is really important. Um, if you get the ratio a bit wrong, then you're risking the silicon not properly curing, not properly setting and just remaining sticky with surrounding your model with just sort of a sticky mess. So you take, you would take the time and your measuring of it, um, weighing it out in two separate containers, your part A, part B, get their weights right, then combine it, thoroughly mix it together. Then what we would do with that mix is we would go and degas it. So putting that in a vacuum chamber to get all of the air out so that we can make sure that silicon mold was as smooth as we could get it. Um, once we've done that, then we would just pour it into our pre-made mold um, and just leave it, leave it on the side to set. Um, again, each different type of silicon will have a different um, cure time, but in general, we would leave it for 24 hours overnight. And the next day we would have, we would have our mold um, like this. And, and then like I say, then what we would do is using a sharp uh, scalpel, the sharper, the better, um, we would carefully cut around um, and release, release our model from the inside. So yeah, that's, that's how we would, that's how we would make a, a, a cold mold and, and the hot molds. So yeah, I'll bring you back over here. And see how we're all doing. Does anyone have any questions at all about the mold making process? Is, is it something that you use very often yourself? Yeah, yeah, I do. The I, cold, yeah. Or the cold way or both? Um, both. Um, so like, so this, like this mold that I'm showing you is one is a recent mold that I've just made. Um, mm -hmm. and it was, it was a wax It's cause I wanted a mold of wax, um, a wax master. Um, but I've like, I've made vulcanized molds before. Um, but it's also worth point, pointing out that I have outsourced mold making as well before, um, because companies are professionals at it and they can save us time. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
but yeah, I know I probably shouldn't say that, but it's okay. part of being a designer is is like it's working out where you're spending your time. Yeah. I was going to say it's perfectly okay to say that because it's it's one of the things that um, Ben is stressing in the the production side is to specialise on what you're good at uh, and outsource what you're not so good at. Yeah. Uh, has anybody developed um, or looked into doing a two part silicon mould that you know will separate without all the cutting and or is the cutting not as fiddly as you have made out? I mean, it's uh, it's not that bad to be honest. Um, it's like it's just the locks, so it's just these bits that are fiddly. But the cutting of the silicon itself, it it it's like cutting like butter. It really wants to be cut, and it will slice really nicely. Um, cutting vulcanized rubber is a pain, and it's horrible. It doesn't want to be cut, and it doesn't want to separate. Uh, but cutting silicon is nice. Um, it's just the locks. And again, like everybody's different. You might find that it's actually a breeze. So. Um, you said that the, the vulcanized molds last longer um, and are more durable. Yeah. How, how, how long is that? In other words, how many, how many wax would you get out of um, a silicon mold? How many waxes would you get out of a, a vulcanized mold? R roughly. You know, I I can't yeah I I don't don't know the facts on that because I've not tested it really I've not I've not ever had a problem with a cold or a, or a vulcanized mold um, um, it's just sort of when when you read up on it that's sort of something that comes up but I'm I'm sure it's more for like mass industry scale um, when you're doing loads. So for us in yeah. the foreseeable future, it's 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 not going to matter. Yeah. I I doubt it. I doubt it. I expect they'll be pretty much the same from what you can get out of them. Sorry, did you say they, do they both have shrinkage? Um, a little bit, but it's like with this cold mold, it's minimal. Mm -hmm. um, and with the with the hot mold, it's quite obvious. Is, is that just because it's rubber? Because of the rubber? I don't know. I'm not entirely sure why it happens, but because yeah. obviously rubber perishes over time. If you know what I mean, it goes. Uh, I don't know. If it's left summer warm or in the sun, you know, you're at a pair of rubber gloves and it, they just uh, stick together. <laughs> I've never seen that. <laughs> and they just kind yeah. of, no, but you know what I mean? I was just, I just wanted yeah. to. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm. Yeah. I know. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, uh, yeah, I'm not sure why. Yeah, I feel like I feel like for me, like mold making, or like even even having like outsourced it is is like quite is pretty useful because as you've probably found out, you've probably spent a long time designing, um, whether that be on Rhino or in wax, one single ring, and then or not ring. I say ring because I. I like making rings, but um, one single piece of jewellery. Um, and then if you were to calculate your time spent on that um, and then sort of price it up for retail, you'll probably find it's, it's just, you'd be priced out of the market because it's so expensive. Um, so like having the longer time and you're just in spending it in the designing and then having a multiple so that then your future for time spent is much less and it helps to weigh it out and helps you to be able to put your design in at a price that people will pay if that all if that made sense but yeah 
Does anybody else have any any questions or anything they want to chat about? Um, I was going to say it's a question for you. It's, it's just a thank you to Emma for for putting the, the note out on Teams. Uh, it was the only thing that woke me up this morning, and uh, otherwise I would have missed. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff cool well um i will so i've um i've cast everybody's 3d prints um that's in the uh that's that all went well successfully and that's in the workshop for you to pick up i'm planning to to burn out the waxes today and cast them tomorrow <clears throat> so touch wood everything will go according to plan <clears throat> and you'll be able to pick up <coughs> sorry you'll be able to pick up everything um tomorrow um so yeah fingers crossed um and then yeah and then next week is our last last zoom session um, before we leave so, yeah. i was gonna say can, can we can we can we get sight of them and get really excited and uh is that is that possible for you to i can bring you over there it's um let me flip you around. I've cut them off, um, off the tree. So they're all covered in investment and waiting, waiting to be cleaned. But this is the box of them. So oh, here you go, Alan. This is your one. Okay. How did the cat? So it's come. How did the cat? They've come? all come out really well. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, they all look like they've been really successful. Um, but yeah, lots of clean up. If you have time and you're able to book into the workshop, I would thoroughly recommend it um, because to say, to quickly get rid of the investment um, using the, the sand, um, sand blasting tool is going gonna, is gonna to make that really quick. So yeah, that's what I'd recommend. That's right. Cammy, Cammy was doing that on... It disappeared Ooh. Ooh. Uh, yeah hold on my phone's having a bit of a moment i'm Nothing. back <laughs> he was doing that on the um the monday i think it was and he he was really pleased with his the change was remarkable he said from yeah it looked very rough and lost all the detail he thought but then when he put it through the yeah. blaster so does the sand blaster erode the metal at all or is it not hard enough to do that? It shouldn't erode the metal. I guess it depends on how gritty the sand is. Um, but I've chatted to Helen and hope, um, we've hopefully got quite a soft one in there. Okay. Um, all it should do is, you know, like a jet wash, just blast, yeah. blast it clean, really. Get all that, um, get all the investment off. Can I just ask, did my one get put in? Yours is in with the waxes. Oh, right. <laughs> so Ben came and gave it to me. So I've screwed it to the wax tree. So yeah, it's gonna be gonna be ready tomorrow. Okay. Well, yeah, we'll, don't worry. We'll, we'll, be on, we'll be in on Monday. Our group. Okay. On Monday. So no, that's good. Thanks. That's reassuring. <laughs> I almost, cried. <laughs> I almost started crying. Oh, no, no, <laughs> no, it's nothing to worry about. Everyone's been included. It's very exciting. You know, this is this is this is this is this is the first the first. You know, it's like jumping in the swimming pool. It is exciting. I'm like I know that it's been stressful for you all. Um, I know that everybody's found the timeline of it very difficult, but I do hope that. Um, once you're able to see your piece in metal, you'll be able to understand the process a bit more and see, like, get a better understanding of what you're capable of making, really. Um, but yeah, I'm going to leave it here. Um, and um, yeah, I should see you guys on Monday for picking up your models, um, if not in our Zoom next week. Uh, just, just, sorry, just, just to hold you back a bit. Um, so the yeah. You know, for example, if you had objects you wanted to cast that wouldn't be burnt out, mm -hmm. for example, your know, natural objects, something like seashells, and is is the obvious mm -hmm. one. Um, yeah. Which which process would be the better one for that? Would 
would it be model you know in terms of in terms of doing what with it what are you so, trying to so make a mold or trying if you're trying to make um a, a seashell and cast that in in metal mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that would be better making a mold um that's that's where the mold process also comes in useful not not just mass production yeah but in yeah in, we in, can uh, like shells can be like if you were, wanted it as an organic burnout it it can work it just, just the um the kiln needs to be a bit higher like to get really hot to 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 properly burn it but yeah making a mold as well gets the exact impression thanks yeah Cool. Right, I will. I will leave you all to it. Um, did you record and this? See you all next week. Millie, did yes, you record this? Is, this? this has been okay. recorded. I'll pop it on. I'll pop it online um, in just a bit. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.